hope of the nations. Jesus, comfort for all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness. Jesus, truth in each circumstance. You are the source of heaven's light on earth. In history, you lived and died. You broke the chains. You rose to life. You are the
things unseen Show me how to love like you have loved me Break my heart for what breaks yours Everything I am for your kingdom's cause As I walk from earth into eternity Hosanna, Hosanna Hosanna in the highest Hosanna, Hosanna Worship you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Just wonder if one or two would just lead us in praise and in thanksgiving and declaring Hosanna this morning.
cast their boast of sin and break. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a powerful name it is nothing can stand
exalt you, Father. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Sometimes it just doesn't feel like it's enough, is it, just to say, I exalt thee. Of what a good and a loving, wonderful God he is. A forgiving God. Yet our worship to him is pleasing. And we thank you for that. We exalt you. We cry, Hosanna. We say what a beautiful, what a wonderful, what a powerful name it is. And we thank you, Lord, that with all of that, with all of that understanding, Father God, we can still come before you. We can still come before you, Lord, with our praise, with our worship but also with our worries and our anxieties and those things that burden us, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, that you still hear every prayer. You hear every cry. And Lord, we do. We, we come before you this morning with whatever worry, whatever problem, whatever issue that's laying on our hearts we come before you and we lay it before you now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord Father God, that those that are unwell, we pray your healing hand upon them now in the name of Jesus. We know that many are unwell amongst us, many are unwell online. Say, Father God, would you heal? Would you provide? Would you give peace? Would you give comfort? Would you be the rock? Would you be the strength? Would you be everything that they need? Now in the name of Jesus we pray. And even through those things that we are carrying, we say we exalt you. What a privilege it is to be able to say we exalt you. What a privilege it is to say Hosanna, the God who saves. Lord, for those that maybe are carrying burdens that are not physical, would you be with them? Lord, would you help them? Lord, would you comfort them? Would you give them the answer? Lord, those who are maybe are worried for loved ones, would you give them a peace and a help through these times, Lord Jesus? You are so faithful. You are so good. Lord, we, we lift up Princess Kate to you this morning, Lord Father God. We saw the news on Friday. We think of the King as well, Father God. And we lift them up to you, Lord. They're a family. They're a family, Lord, who are having to go through this publicly, but they're going through it privately as well, Lord. And we pray you give them peace. And you would have your healing hand upon them. And I pray, Lord, that they would turn to you, Father God, through this time. And that they would know you are their rock, and you are their salvation. You are their help in times of need, Lord Jesus. Be you with them. Great are you. You are faithful and you are wonderful. And as we prepare our hearts now, we're going to sing, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God sent his son They called him Jesus He came to love 
heal and forgive He lived and died To buy my pardon An empty grave is there To prove my Savior lives Because He Life is worth the living because he lives. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we can face those things that the future holds. Because he lives, we can stand here this morning and declare Hosanna. Because he lives... He's took all of those burdens, all of that shame, all of that guilt upon his shoulders and took it from me, from me and you. Because he lives. Hallelujah. Do tell your seats, but let's stay in this mode of worship. Let's not lose what's happening here this morning. See, because he lives... But we know that for him to have got there, he went through pain, he went through suffering, 
physically, mentally, spiritually. He took it all on. And we'll be looking at that even more this week as we celebrate Easter and what that means to us. And today he starts our triumphal entry. Starts our triumphal entry. And it's a triumphal entry. It's a victory walk. Even though it ends in death, it brings us the victory. And we thank him. We give you praise this morning, Jesus. But it does tell us in 1 Corinthians that we should examine ourselves and examine our hearts before taking this, that we should take it seriously. That it's not something we should just do. It's not something we do out of habit. But it's something we do because we remember him. We remember him who died on that cross for me and for you. And sometimes we just say it, don't we? And it feels so easy just to say. And this week as I've been preparing for Easter, I've been looking at videos and songs and what have you. And you see some of those images. And he reminds you that this was not just something he did. But this is something he went through. So we didn't have to. So as we just stop just for a moment. As we examine our hearts. And as we give him thanks this morning. Let's just take a moment to do that. I'm going to ask Joy, Vicky and Peace to help me serve this morning. But let's just spend a moment in his presence, remembering. So as we take this this morning, we remember you, we give you thanks, and we examine our hearts before you, Lord Jesus.
So Lord, we give you thanks this morning. We give you praise. And we say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, for all that you will do for us, and for your blessings are new every morning. In your precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 It's been good, isn't it, to worship God, to spend time in his presence. Uh, we missed you last week. We missed you. We were at our old church, which was nice, but we missed being here. We missed being with you, and uh, it's good to be back. Before we go into video news, this is one thing I want to do uh, this morning, which... Um, this person will probably hurt me in a moment. But <laughs> it's because we need to... We had great news this week, didn't we? If you saw the WhatsApp, we had great news. As that bell got rang, don't worry, Max. You don't have to get up. You can stay there. Max is not somebody who likes to come up the front. We wanted just to acknowledge that moment. So everything that Max has been through... Yeah, it was wonderful. Because, yeah, amen, amen. You know, we, we've stood with you, we've prayed with you, and now we're celebrating with you, Mags. And we couldn't let that opportunity to go, not just to say, Mags, you're an inspiration to us, the way you've dealt with that, with the way your positive attitude, and um, the way you knew... That each week, even if you weren't feeling great, you were here worshipping God. Amen. But also we want to give glory to God. Amen. We want to give praise to God. So let's just give God a wonderful, well-deserved round of applause and praise for all that he's done. Yeah, we give you glory, God. And we say thank you. And, um, and Max does scare me, so be nice to me later, Max, you know. <laughs> if, if I disappear, you know who to go looking to, okay? <laughs> so we're going to keep praying for you. Sorry? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Right, we'll quickly move on to video news. <laughs> Hello, good morning, and welcome to Mosborough Elim Church. This is Video News. So this week, coming up in the life of the church, we have on Tuesday at 6.30 our prayer meeting. Please do join us if you can, but as I always say, if you can't, please take time to pray, pray for each other, pray for the church, pray for the community. If you can join us, please do, Tuesday at 6.30. If you have any prayer requests, please let myself or Titus know, and it would be our honour to pray for you. So that's prayer meeting, Tuesday, 6.30 via Zoom. Also on Tuesday at 7 o'clock in the church, we have our worship workshop. With a slight difference this week, so for this week, we um, only want those who can play instruments, who are playing instruments or learning instruments, um, to come along at 7 o'clock at the church. Those who are vocalists, you get a week off, you get to rest your vocals this week and it will be back to normal the week after. So that's Tuesday, 7 o'clock at church, worship workshop, those who play instruments. While we're talking about worship, we have live worship coming back in April and in May. We've got not just one, we've not got just two, but we have three live worships coming up over the next month or two. And of course, this week by Friday, we are at Good Friday. We have two things happening that day. Firstly, at 11 a.m., in the church, we have our toy library too. This is where we just reach out to the community. We bless them, we have some refreshments, we'll have some board games, we'll have some crafts, we'll have some Easter things for them to do. I'm really looking forward to that. Can I encourage you to come along, bring, bring family members along. Please pray for it. And um, if you want to get involved in any way, please come and speak to us as well. 
So that's Friday at 11 a.m. And then in the evening at seven o'clock, we have our Good Friday service. Our reflective service as we spend time reflecting, as we spend time remembering, as we spend time taking communion together, as we remember that Jesus died for us, as he took all of those burdens and all of those sins upon his shoulders and he died on that cross for us. This is such an important service to be part of. I want to encourage you to be with us, encourage you to come along and um, take part and be part of this. So that will be from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. There will be online, all being well as well, but I want to really encourage you, if you can be with us, please do be with us. And then on Sunday at 11 a.m., it is Easter Sunday, and we get to celebrate. We'll have a family service, and we will celebrate that Jesus is alive, because the story doesn't end on Friday. It continues, and we are going to celebrate, we're going to praise, we're going to worship, and we're going to have a great time together as we celebrate that Jesus is alive. Just to throw it in now, also on Sunday, the clocks go forward an hour as well. So just be wary of that. The clocks do go forward. But please do join us as we celebrate that Jesus is alive. And very quickly, can I just remind you of some of those announcements we've been saying. Alpha Course, if that's of interest to you, if that's going to be a help to you as you continue to build upon your faith, please come and speak to myself or Vicky. Baptisms, we'd love to get the baptism pool back open. If you've not been baptised and you're thinking it's about time you should, please come and speak to me and we would love to, to go on that journey with you. Can I remind you of the development fund at the back? If you are able to give any extra money towards the extend part of the vision, we would be so, so grateful. So if you're able just to put a pound or a five pound or whatever it may be into there, please do. If you want to transfer money, please speak to Titus um, on how the best way to do that. Also, a reminder that we're looking at men's group and ladies group, but at the moment men's group and that's a sign-up sheet is at the back. You're not signing up your life. You're not signing up commitment. You're just saying, yes, this is something I may be interested in. If that's you, please do sign up at the back. Thank you. And as I always say, don't forget our church website has all the information. It has everything that you need to know about the life of the church. Otherwise, let's keep expanding, equipping, evolving and extending. God bless you. Amen. So the younger groups, younger group, you're out there this week. The older group, you're staying in because we realised you are going to learn what you were going to learn in there, exactly what you're going to learn in here. So just the younger group this morning. Um, if you go to your groups, Vicky's going to come up and share the word to us this morning. I'm just going to pray. So Lord, would you bless that younger group, Lord? Would you have your hand upon it, Lord? Would you bless the leaders as they teach and input into their lives? But equally for us, Lord, we want to hear your word. We want to hear your voice this morning. We want to hear about you, Lord Jesus. Give us hearts to hear you, Lord, we pray in your precious name. Amen. Amen. I'm quite glad about I'm disappointed that the clock's going forward because I lose an hour, but I'm also glad the clock's going forward because my car clock will be the correct time because I don't actually know how to change it. So I just have to wait. So it'll actually tell me the right time. Don't worry, I am getting to work on time. I, I just have to remember the right time now. So just looking at what think my talk might be on today what's special today it's palm sunday and colin's brought us some palms in so that's great now palm sunday is also very special to me um because on the 9th of april 2006 it was palm sunday now you might think Vicky, that's a bit of an odd reason to remember back in 2006 but it was actually the day that daisy was born so she was actually born on palm sunday in 2006 and I can tell you the weather was very different, apparently, because I was in high dependency, so I don't see outside. But apparently, it was snowing. 
Um, on the 9th of April, <laughs> on Palm Sunday, 18 years ago. So Palm Sunday, it's one of those things that we come every year, it's Palm Sunday, and we talk about Palm Sunday. But I want to go to be, back to basics a little bit, because it's something that we celebrate, but sometimes I think do those things what happened what makes the significance of the donkey and the colt and the palm trees and putting the palm leaves down what are their significance and sometimes we can get into the habit of um constantly you know coming every year and celebrating but not really understanding the what is behind it and the reasons why there's been in the bible and it celebrates it's my do you want me to swap keep going Okay, um, so I'm going back to basics. So I apologise if you're already... And I will just move very loudly at the moment because the microphone's not working. So, which I probably don't need. Um, so I do apologise if it is a bit back to basics for some of you, but I just thought it's good to, to sometimes go back and re-look at things and learn it for a new perspective as well. So Palm Sunday is a very special time leading up to Easter. And we know that Good Friday's coming and the best of all, that Easter Sunday happens. And I've been into love Google. I'm so thankful to Google. I wish it was around when I was younger because Google is amazing. I found commentaries on there and I've found information that I didn't know before. So, which has been really when looking at Palm Sunday. So I'm going to read. From, chapter, from John 12, verse 12. So that's John chapter 12, at verse 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming. Seated. At first, his disciples did not understand all of this. After Jesus was glorified, that these things were written about him. that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, I like that they're, they're like the, the, the bad ones in this, but I always want to go boo when it says, I always like to go boo. It's like a, you know, pants of mine. Um, so the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the world has gone off. Do you know what? Even they realized that, you know, who Jesus was at that point, and it wasn't looking good. But it's interesting, only a few days later, where these people were celebrating Jesus, there's a turn. And it wasn't a celebration. As, as Good Friday comes, we see that people turn against him. What I, you, again, some this, but I didn't realize. But in the book of Zechariah, which is in the old, in chapter nine, it is actually prophesied. This is prophesied, and I love it because Jesus's birth is prophesied in Isaiah. And so in Zechariah, it's it, in chapter nine. It says, "Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion." Isn't that amazing that this is then shown in in John? Shout, daughter of Jerusalem, see your king, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey, so a baby donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to all the nations. He will rule with extended from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of my blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners and the waterless pits. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. And even now I announce I will restore twice as much to you. I will bend Judah as I bend my bow and fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your son's Sion against your son's Greece and make you warriors sword. 
Now, I love the fact, I love finding little gems. Um, and I, saw, I thought I'll Google to find how many years was it between the prophecy and it actually happened. I couldn't quite find it, but what I found was that it was actually 500 years between that being written and Jesus' birth. So isn't that amazing? There's something that happened 500 years before that was written, then came and was, came true. I just think that, I can't even remember what I did last week. You know, for something to happen five years apart is amazing. And that's what I love. And even in Isaiah, it talks about Jesus' birth, and then it happens. And it's for. It didn't just happen, it was fulfilled as it's written in our word, in the word of God. And I love that. In ancient times, palm tree, goodness, victory, and peace. Also mention of palm trees in Revelation. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about Revelation in terms of going deep into it, because that's that's Lee's job, not mine. Um, but in Revelation 7, verse 9, it actually says, After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no, one could, that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And I love that. So palm branches, is not just, it's meant to old in the new at the end it's amazing it's mentioned so much about peace this shows with the palm leaves that the people recognized who jesus was and they were and victorious and they knew and we see that on easter sunday don't we sorry if you don't know the story i read it for you but easter sunday is really exciting and it kind of sums everything up and it's a day of massive celebration and it's in a celebration, but we lead up to the days and Good Friday happens. And if you come to the Good Friday service, you'll see that's hard. It's a hard, we call it Good Friday, but it's one of the most, I think for me, the most emotional services, celebrations that we have because it just brings together why we believe and actually how much Jesus loved us and how much he went through for us and it's just yeah i find it one of the most um hard celebration service but one of the hardest that we do and um I, we went to see lee and i went to see came out to the mel gibson one um i kind of think what it's called passion of christ oh my goodness it is an 18 so if you're under 18 watch it um but even if you're above 18 it's a difficult watch and i have to say we went me and Leeds went to the cinema and watched it and it was just like you could have heard a pin drop it was just the most emotional thing i've ever seen. it was such an emotional film yeah good friday's a hard one but in first in 14 we read that he um came on a donkey or cult so the donkey and cult well the, why is this significant he could have come on a horse, because a horse means peace, but it also means war. So if somebody came on a horse, it would be peace, but also war. And Jesus wasn't up for war. He was about war. Also, when he came, it was a mother, when they went to go to get the donkey, a mother or the donkey and its colt. So it was a baby with its mum. And this is quite significant, and I'll go on to explain this, because I was just like bowled over, and I had no real understanding of why this is significant, because it's actually mentioned in the Old Testament, isn't it? We read that it was about a cult as well. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples. This is from Matthew 21. Saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and once you, once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them straight away. I just love that. Can you imagine Jesus saying, look, just go and do it. It's fine. It's kind of, they know why. I'm a little bit scared just in case they were like, what are you doing? 
the things. I think I'd be a bit worried about that. They, this took place to, to fulfill what's been spoken through the prophet. See, your king comes to you gently riding on a donkey, on a colt, of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. Well, when I looked up the significance of the donkey, I found these two things that were on Google. So they're tying up two interpretations of what this means. So, you know, I just thought it was quite significant. You know, I thought, wow, I'd never thought of it in this way. So the writing that's... This person have been especially young. That's in Mark 11, verse 2 and Luke 19, verse 30. The donkey like a colt may old and the new comfort between God and Israel. That's one I hadn't thought of. Somebody else put, the disciples were sent... Jesus' journey to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. It was an unbroken cult. Ridden. It's, um, you hear about unbroken horses, don't you? So they're ones that have never been ridden. Understanding of how to be ridden. Um, so it was unbroken. And Bolshe, I love that. Resistant and Bolshe, even as the cloaks were first thrown over his back been like a bit unruly because he had been unbroken this has been quite unruly but it allowed Jesus to ride on the back that's the one I, I love that interpretation that this broken colt that probably wouldn't have let anybody ride ride him because he was unbroken and he was young but allowed Jesus to ride him I love that What we know is the donkey and the cult represent humility. As I said, kings would ride horses, but Jesus decided to ride the donkey and the cult because of humi humility. And if we remember back to Jesus' birth, where was he born? In a stable. Kings were born in palace. He's still our king, but he comes to show us humility and shows us he's one of our, that he, you know, represents us and he loves us just the way we are. And I love that. And I just think that's so special. Um, that at the start and near the end, he's still showing us, I am a king, but I'm coming humili humbly to serve you. And how much we need to take that as we serve our community, as we serve our friends, as we serve our family as well. We come humbly because, you know, Lee and I always say, you know, especially Lee says, I, I'm a pastor, but I'm still a human. I'm still just a person like everybody here. It's just that my job is a pastor of the church. That's what I'm looking at him saying, yeah, that's what you say. You know, I'm just, that's my job. I'm now a barista. That's my job. You know, that is all the things that we do. But we're here to serve and we show, to show God's love and to show what he's done for us. And I do find, as I said, I find this time just a really humbling time to remember what he did for us and actually how much he's done for me and how what an amazing life that I've had as a Christian so far. And I get excited to know what's going to happen next. And I don't have a lot of patience, which I'm working with because I like to know now. <laughs> Also, with Hosanna. So we sung a lot about Hosanna, haven't we? Hosanna. Oh, no. uh, there's a reason why I'm not in the choir. But the reason, the scripture def and the definition of Hosanna is praise and joy and adoration. But it also pray and save us, which is great. This is an exciting day and a celebration. But as I've already said... It leads to not such a great celebration, but there is celebration at the end. People turned against him. And it just makes me so sad at the end when it said the Pharisees, oh, they can, they're starting to see what he's doing. Oh, we need to intervene. We know that that, was, that had to happen, but 
that's really sad and it, it breaks my heart that things turned. It's like reading the end of, end of a book. If you read books and it's like, you know the end and it's, it's exciting but sad and you're like, I know what's coming. I don't know if I want to read anymore, but there is a celebration at the end. I pray that we have a clearer understanding today on Palm Sunday and so the significance of each piece that we've looked at. Because sometimes we can come along, we go, especially if we've been Christians a long time, especially if we've been coming to church a long time, we can get into the habit of just, oh, it's Palm Sunday again, oh, it's Easter Sunday again, it's Good Friday, and going through the motions. That we really look back, and I challenge you to look back into the Bible and find, and really find the gems, and ask God to show you the new gems that he wants to show you about Palm Sunday and about Good Friday and about Easter Sunday. And I pray that God reveals those things to you. That even though we may be Christians a long time, that we see it through fresh eyes. That we see Jesus through fresh eyes. I'm so excited we've got, um, with, with new um, people coming along. I've had chats with, new uh, with the new people that have been coming along and, and some, some people I've spoken to have found faith for the first time. And do you know what? I love it because I can see the excitement that I had when I was 12, when I gave my life. And it brings back, actually, I should still have excitement and that joy and that encouragement. And so I, and I used to say, hey, we used to sing songs in and um, they're very, they used to laugh because it's like they're really old songs. But to me, it was like, shine, Jesus, shine. And a lot of you are like, oh my goodness. But to me, that was a new song. And it, I didn't know it had been around a very long time. But it was a new song and I enjoyed it. And I love the fact that we have to embrace that, that newness, that things might be old, but for the, through new eyes and through new excitement and that is what i'm loving um with our family at the moment we're seeing fresh ideas and fresh new eyes and perspectives on things and it has really challenged me i want to say i've been really challenged so thank you very much so i'm just going to close and just pray and i just uh yeah just really over this time have a, a real think about what this means to you as well. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the celebration that we have today um, in Palm Sunday. Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, that as we know what is coming, Lord, reveal with fresh eyes, reveal fresh gems to us that may be We've read maybe a hundred times or even five times, but we will see it in a new way. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with us over this holy week, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that as we come, I just thank you for who you are and what you've done for us and for each one. And I thank you that we have that you've done so much for us. And thank you that we know the end of the story and we know it's a celebration, but we know it's a tough ride up to it. But thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us on a regular basis. I thank you for this church family. I thank you that we've got so many people that are new, with you a long time that we've got real it's it's great and it's fresh and i love it and i thank you lord for this this family church lord but thank you lord for you and thank you for loving us for who we are and meeting us where we are just the way we are thank you lord amen Amen. Amen. To see Easter and not just take it for granted, not just to have it as one of those things we do week in, week out, or once a year, 
And it's good for us to be reminded to look at it with fresh eyes this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to stand, we're going to sing, we're going to take our offering as well, and we're going to sing, Your Love Never Fails. If I ran away, your love never fails I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day Cause your love never fails Stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me your love never fails The wind is strong and the water's deep But I'm not alone here in these open seas Cause your love never fails is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side But your love never fails You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in I know that you love me Your love never fails You make all things work together for my good You make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good You make all things work together for my good You make all things work together for my good You make all things work together for my good You make all things work together for my good You make all things work together for my good You stay the same through the ages Your love changes 
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that your love never fails, never gives up on us, never lets us down, and is with us always. And we just thank you for that, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, you go with us this way. You be with us step of the way, Lord, we pray. In your precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can I just remind you, uh, tea and coffee, please do stay for that. If you are a Sunday school leader or helper, don't forget we've got a meeting in 10 minutes' time in this room. And um, we are back on Friday at 7pm for a reflective service. Have a great week. God bless. <laughs>